Hi, Josiah, you're muted. Hello. Do we have any attendees yet? No, not yet. They're just starting coming in. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Josiah Elgin Fritz. I will be leading the lunch and learn today. Looks like we're starting to get a few people coming in. Um, so if you've got any questions, go ahead and let us know and we will be happy to answer them. We'll wait here just a minute or two for a few more folks to join before we get started. All right, any questions from our attendees so far? All right, here's a question we've got coming in. The question is, how do I build a report that shows things specifically that are in a given folder? Um, to do that, we can use a, a specific filter that is for current folder. So let me pull up an instance of decisions here and I'll show you what I mean. Let's see, I'll come down here and create an example and let me let me create a folder here and put some things in it. And I'm just gonna add a couple of things in here. So I'll just add some comments. Just so we've got some data in this folder. All right, so if I wanna create a report that reports specifically on things that are in any given folder, I'm gonna come up here and I'll say create a report. And this report is going to look at comments. Because that's what we've got in the folder. So we'll add our data source here. And 
and we'll show the fields on here. All right, so we can easily see, like, we've got this report, and it is currently just reporting on comments, so it is showing all of the comments that exist in all of decisions. Now, we want to limit this so that when we put this report somewhere, it only shows items for the given folder that we're looking at. So I'm going to add a filter on here. And under the filters, there's a category here for in folders. And I have a couple options here. I could say for current folder, or I could say if I wanted everything in the hierarchy tree here, I could say current folder and subfolders. For this, I'm just going to say for current folder. And now I don't see anything because it just so happens that the folder where I'm looking at this report doesn't have any comments. So I'm going to save this. And so if I were to run the report here, I've got nothing here. Nothing is displaying because there's no comments in this folder. If I were to come to my test folder here, and I'm going to add that report to this page. And here, now that I've got that report set here, it's just showing me this. I've got one comment because there's a comment that's actually in this folder. I could even change this now. Let's say I put that report onto this page. Right, and I've got nothing in here. That There is no comments in this. But let's say I were to change this report. I'm going to change this filter instead of for current folder. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to add a new one in here and I'm going to say for current folder and subfolders because now I can say in the subfolder of this I've got that comment and I've actually got a few other ones that are in there as well and so now this this report will actually show me things both in this folder and in any subfolders that I may have here so now I can look at this one this one is just there's nothing in any subfolders here I just have that comment this one has these, oops, let me switch back to that view, these comments in that folder. So those filters can be used uh, to view things specific to the folder where the report is being shown. All right, here's another question. How do I create a form that closes itself after five minutes of inactivity? So let's say we've got a form and we've got a user that's there. And if that user walks away from their screen, whatever they're doing, we want that form to automatically be able to close uh, and not just be sitting there waiting for something to happen. So to do that, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a flow and a form so we'll start by creating the form here. And we'll just put a couple of controls on here. We'll put a button on here. And we'll put a text box. And we'll give it a label. Nice, simple form. Now, so now we've got this form, we can put it in a flow, and when that flow runs, this form will be here and it will be open. But we want this form to automatically close after a certain amount of time. There's a control. Um, which I have to remember what the name of it is. Ah, timer form exit, that's what we want. So I'm gonna drop that on here. And it's going to give us a control. And we can do a couple of things with this. So the first thing is we give it an outcome name. This is much like the button. This is going to be the path that shows up in our flow. We can give it a time that we want. So we can say we want this thing to close after 30 seconds. Um, and then there's a couple of settings that we can set here. We can say we want this to uh, start only we only want to count the time from when someone has last done some action on the form. We'll check that box. Or if we uncheck that, as soon as the form loads, 
this countdown will start. The confirmation allows us to say, if the time runs out, we want to pop up to come up and say something like, hey, this form is about to auto close. Do you really want to let it auto close, right? If you logged into your bank account and you're looking at things after some amount of time, it's going to time out and say that it's going to log you out. But it always gives you a confirmation that says, we're going to log you out in 30 seconds. Are you done on the page? So we can give something like that here and we can even customize what text we want to do it. We can give it some buttons to close the button, all the, the form altogether, reset the timer. So now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and put this in a flow. So we'll create a new flow here. And we'll drop our form in there. And you can see we've got the outcome from our button and we also have the outcome from that timer exit. So now we'll go ahead and debug this and we'll get our form popped up here. And we're just gonna let it sit here for 30 seconds. And what we'll see is that we'll get the confirmation because we turn that on that the form is about to close. All right, so the form is about to close. This timer, we, so we could say reset, and that'll take us back here, um, which is now going to reset our 30 seconds. I should have made that timer shorter. Um, but once that pops back up, we can either let it just sit. If it sits for 10 seconds, because that's the timer we set on that, it'll automatically close the form. Or we can hit the button to close automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and just let it sit here. And after about 10 seconds, this whole form should close out for us. And there we go. And we can see it went down the timer exit path. So that's how you configure if a form can close automatically without any interaction from the user. And like I said, the configuration in there, we can tell it that we want that timer to start on inactivity, which means that if someone is in there working on the form, that timer won't happen. Um, so, or we can say, as soon as that form loads, we want to start that countdown. And when we hit that countdown, go ahead and close out the form. And do we need a confirmation or do we just want to automatically close the form for the user and be done? Any questions about setting that up, configuring the auto close? All right, uh, another question that I've got here is, how do you write a report that combines filters using or logic? It's a great question. So normally when we build a report, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new report here. Normally when I create a report and I add filters to it, those filters are, are combined using a traditional and. Like if I were to write a query, I would say, do a thing where this and this is true. So let me just add some data in here. I'm going to add accounts as the data type. And we will show, where's my email address here? All right, so we've got a whole bunch of things in here. We've got all of these different people that have an account on this server. Now we say we want to put some filters on this. I only want to see uh, where email address contains a J, right? And I may also only want to see where an email address contains um, or let's say, so we want to say only contains a J and 
and we'll say, where's the last login date? Here we go. And last login date is greater than uh, January 1st. So we'll get that data. Now, if we say, okay, that's great, but what happens if we want to say, we want to see where email address contains J or last login great date is greater than January 1st, right? Right now, we are only getting the things where both of those two conditions are met. If we come in here to add under filters, there's going to be an option here, and we can say infrastructure, and we can put an or in here. And so now I get an or filter, and if I configure this, it's going to ask me what filters this or applies to. So I'm going to say filter one is email address contains, filter two is last login date is greater than. So now I get a list of people who have logged in after January 1st or their email address contains a J instead of only being the combination of where those two things together are met. Um, and I can add as many filters into the or as I need here. Um, and I can do some additional things. I've got a, um, oops, an and filter in there too, so I can do some complex and or logic as, a, as is needed. Any questions about the, the and and the or filters for a report? All right. Any other questions from our attendees today? All right, so here's another question. Uh, what happens if I have something I want to display on all of my forms, uh, but I, I want to be able to change it in only one place? Is there a way to do that? Um, so the way to do that is with a form background. So form background is kind of a, a template that you're going to set on a form uh, that allows you to reuse that thing over and over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create a form background here. And you can see here we've got kind of that same grid view. Now the things that we can do on this are going to be considerably limited uh, from what we can do on an actual normal form, because this form, this is just meant to be a background. So if I want to set some colors or set some images, like a header image here, um, or something like that, some text that's going to be applied to everything in the form, I'm going to set that here. So for example, now my, my bottom row where my buttons are is going to be gray. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to actually put an image in here. Um, let's see here. put some swords on there, right? So we're gonna have this as our, our form template that we're gonna apply to our forms. So I'll go ahead and, and save that. And now I'm gonna edit a form and we've already got a form here with our auto close form. Oops, looking at the wrong report here. Uh, take a look at this form and I'm gonna look at the properties here and I'm gonna say, I wanna put a form background on this. I'm gonna pick our form background here. And it's going to apply that style, if you will, to this form. So now the form automatically has that little icon on the top. It's already got the banner down here. Now, what I can and can't do is edit the form background here directly, right? That form background has said the top, however many, you know, whatever size that row is of this form is taken up by this. So you can see I still have my grid on my normal form. I can put a label here 
and it's going to kind of go over top of that background. That background is going to sit behind whatever I want to show here, uh, but it is now customizable or it is now editable at one place. So if all of the forms for my company need to have the same banner and, and footer on them, I can put that background on and put that background on them. And if I ever want to go update that, I can update that background and make changes to it. Now, you do kind of need to keep that in mind as you're building out your form, right? I probably don't actually want to put controls over top of the header up there. So maybe I need to resize the grid on this form to have a row that takes up that space and then have the rest of my form here, right? It, the way that that template is set up is that the, the footer banner is the same size as the default footer that we already have uh, on the form template or on the, the template for creating a new form. So, you know, a couple things that you can do there, but if you do want to have one place where you're editing uh, details like that for it, you know, maybe you need a legal disclaimer that you want to put onto all of your forms or something like that. You can do that in the form background, put it onto all of your forms, and use that as a starting place and a single place to uh, make changes to that instead of having to edit all of your form. All right, um, another question here. I've accidentally deleted a very important flow. Is there any way to recover it? Uh, Good news, there is absolutely a way to recover deleted flows. Um, so let me go ahead and wait for this to reload here. All right, so I'm gonna close out of my form here. So let's say I'm in here working and I delete this flow. My flow is gone. And then I realized, wait, I need that flow back. It's now deleted. How do I get back to it? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to the folder view. And I'm going to change this report because I've oops, actually applied a report directly onto this. Um, so what I need to do is I'm going to come in here and I say, I want to change the report that I'm viewing. And I'm going to come in here, and normally this is going to be on all folder entities. I'm going to change this report to all folder entities with deleted. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to get a report here, and now it's going to say, here's all of the things in there that are not deleted. And here's all of the things in here that are deleted. I'm going to right-click on this deleted item. And my server is apparently very slow today. And try refreshing this. All right, here we go. And I'm going to say undelete flow. And I want to undelete it. And it's going to pop back up. And if I go back to my normal list of things here, I've got that flow back. So anytime that you've deleted a flow or a form or a rule or anything, um, you can go and to that folder view, come to the little gear icon and say change report, and select all folder items with delete. If you need to see hidden items, you can do a similar thing and say all folder items with hidden. So for example, in here, I do have some hidden things. Um, for example, that page report that I put on here um, is in here and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this so that I don't keep seeing the wrong report. Um, any questions about undeleting an item that has been deleted? All right, here's another question. I can't remember all of the places that a flow or a form or a data type or a rule that I've built is used. Is there a way to see uh, 
how long or how where that thing is used. Uh, and the answer is yes. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to edit this flow. Or I can come in here to um, dependencies and I can say browse dependencies. And here I can see I've got my flow and it will tell me this thing depends on this form. If I click on that, I can see things that depend on this form. So for example, this form uh, depends on the background and it should also show me the things that use this. I should see here my flow. Let me create another flow here. All right, nice simple flow here. We'll save that. I can also get the two the dependencies from inside the flow designer. And so I can see here, I'm gonna look at my auto close flow. Dependency browser is not telling me. All right, here we go. So this flow, depends on this or this flow says it depends on that if i click on that one it depends on both the auto close form and flow one so i can see the relationship here between this flow and this flow this flow and this form if i can move over to here i can see the relationship between this if this flow were used by multiple things i would be able to see the whole list of things that that flow was used by so the dependency browser is really really useful uh, for figuring out where a particular component is used uh, and what it is used by. All right, uh, there's a question about how long do deleted items stay before they're deleted permanently and can that be changed? That can be changed. Um, if I go to system and then settings, I believe it is under portal settings. Let me see here. Nope. Maybe it's just archive settings. Ah, yes, archive settings. Uh, in here, this is where I'm going to set how long things are going to go before they get archived, which in this case is going to clear out those things that are deleted. Um, so this is where you're going to set that. It's going to say 30 days. You can actually set specific archive policies uh, for other for specific types of things. So if you've got a specific uh, data type or component that you want to have a different policy than the default one, uh, you can set that here. But by default, it's going to be 30 days before those things get cleared out of the system. And that's the archive settings under system settings. All right, any other questions today? All right, Alex, you've got a question? Yes, uh, so I'm, I'm working with the designer repository and uh, I go to check in changes and um, it uh, pops up a window with a bunch of stuff that um, I don't think is related to my project. So, uh, and it doesn't actually show up in my, um, you know, kind of uh, tree view uh, associated with the project. But, you know, doing some digging and I mean, it's kind of tied in with some of the things that you've been showing. Uh, I go into my folder view and lo and behold, I see them uh, at the folder view level, but uh, not, you know, like in a regular fashion. So. I'm trying to kind of trying to figure out how I clean out my folder view so that uh, these things don't uh, you know appear and you know in some instances uh, I'll look at the dependencies of this thing and they're showing 
that they do have dependencies, but when I try and validate uh, the dependencies, it seems like the dependencies are not valid. So is there any way I can actually kind of find out in a, like in a more deterministic fashion, how this thing is kind of related to the project, why it's being picked up and, uh, you know, I mean, there's kind of a variety of questions in there, I, I imagine. Yeah, so the the items that are getting pulled in, are they things that are actually in the folder with the, the components? Well, what, again, what type of, what well, type of I, things are they? So like, for example, uh, uh, if I click on the folder view, it will um, show me, whoa, now it's uh, completely different than it was yesterday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so they would be, um, like they would not show up in the regular view, but, uh, and they would be flows or forms or uh, history folders, uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, so it sounds like you're, you're getting some of the, the hidden components pulled in that you may or may not want to. Now, depending on the type of thing that you're building, um, some decisions, uh, flow steps and objects actually have hidden uh, things that go along with them. For example, like a run flows for list step uh, or a rule collection filter will have a, a rule or a flow that's associated with it that doesn't show up normally in the, the folder view. It's there, but it's hidden. Um, so that kind of thing, uh, when you go to do the check-in, decisions will say, hey, like you've got these components. Um, they're not just visible normally in the in the folder because you don't want to just be able to, to get in there and edit them because they are tied specifically to a, a particular flow uh, and are only meant to be used with that thing because they, they kind of have the context of that flow or that form built into them. Um, and so it'll try to bring those along uh, because it, they're needed for the thing that you want to check in. Now, things like history folders or unit tests, you may or may not actually want to bring those along. And there's actually, there is a setting, if you go and look at the um, designer repository settings, uh, there's an option in here to exclude unit tests. I thought we had an option in here for excluding history folders as well. Um, but those are, you know, one of those things that you may just not want to bring along into the repository, um, but it is a thing that decisions keeps, right? The history folder is used for decisions to track uh, the changes to that flow and what's happened to that flow as it's gone along. Um, if when you save, you're saving comments about what changes you have been made, those all go into that history folder. If you're making checkpoints of the flow, those all go into that history folder. Um, so it's one of the things that decisions uses in the background uh, to store some of the data, the metadata about what that flow is and what it does. Um, but a lot of times you don't actually need that metadata, you know, moved into the repository and moved into uh, the higher level servers because it really applies to the development itself. And so in that case, you know, you want to just uncheck it when it's saying, hey, we've, we've found these other things that we think might belong to your project. Um, and say, so don't bring that over with the project. It, we don't need it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, an example of one of the things that I've, I've found is, is that I have like, a, there's something here that's called a, a form autocomplete flow uh, is one of the things that is kind of showing up in my uh, folder view. And it says that its state is invalid. And okay, so, so the, the, the invalid state means that there's something in that flow that ha is throwing a validation. Maybe it's a step that's not connected. Um, you know, it, it could yeah. be that someone had you know, been building in it and just left a step in there they're not using. Maybe there's yeah. an input that's not mapped or something like that. No, um, so this is exactly it. It's like, it's just a, it is a, a flow that seems to be sitting here. It's got a start step, it's got an end step, but they're not connected. Mm -hmm. But my, my kind of question is, is that like, so it says it's associated with a particular form as the autocomplete flow associated with the form. But when I go to the form, and look at its like autocomplete step, there's nothing configured. So like, I'm kind of feeling that this is somehow orphaned here. It, it, it may be, it, what it sounds like at some point, somebody set that form up to have an autocomplete flow in it and then kind of unconfigured that. Like they said, we don't need this here. 
Um, and so the, that flow isn't actually being used by the form anymore. Um, so when you go and edit the form, it doesn't say that it's using that thing, uh, but the flow is still there. But also in the dependencies, the, this flow thinks it is associated with that form. It still believes that it's associated to that form. Yeah, so that that's the actual relationship that I'm trying to figure out is why it thinks that. So, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, again, given that this is all database, uh, you know, driven, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there's something that I can look at to find out what is. There is, there is a table that maintains that relationship, and I believe it is the module dependency table. Let me see here. I mean, ultimately, what I really want to know is, can I just delete this thing? Because it's annoying me. If you're not using it, and in the, like the the thing that it believes to, um, that it believes that it's associated with, isn't actually using it, you should be able to just delete it. Okay, and if I delete it, and the thing that believes that it should be using it uh, uh, actually is using it, then it will complain about that. It'll basically throw me an error somewhere else. It. If you try to delete it and it is actually being used by something, decisions will tell you that it's being used by something and won't let you delete it. Okay, so yeah, that's what's going on. It's telling me that this flow is being used by these other flows. And uh, so, sorry, buddy. All right, so yeah, the table is, whoops. Uh, module resource dependency. And it will have the ID of the thing, the ID that it's related to, or the ID of the row, and then the from entity and the to entity are going to be what thing is related to what thing. Yeah, but so I, how do I find out if, um, like, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to find out uh, in the flow that it thinks it's related to whether that flow actually has a reference to this uh, UUID. If it is actually related to that form at all? Well, yeah, because I mean, what you're showing me here, if I understand correctly, is what is what I'm going to get if I right click and do dependencies. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but like, so I get that in the in the UI. So, but what I want to know is I can't find out in the actual flow that it's referring to why it thinks it's related to this. That is a very good question. For that, I, I'm going to have to refer you to the support team for that. It sounds like there may be some additional digging that we need to, to do there. I don't know why um, that would still be thinking that it is related uh, if it's not actually being used by that form anymore. It shouldn't have that dependency any longer. Um, if you right click on it and tell it to update dependencies, does it clear that issue or does it clear the dependencies? Uh, dependencies. Oh, update dependencies. Okay. Uh, dependencies, browse dependencies. No, the dependencies are the same. It's still there. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll take it up with support. That's that's great. Thank you. Yeah. If if that thing is like the form when you look at it and you look at it and like the form doesn't have any reference to it, that dependency should be cleaned up. So I'm not sure why it's still there and then not letting you delete it because it's not actually being used by the form. Okay. All right. Any other questions today? All right. Well, thank you all for coming today to the Lunch and Learn. Um, I appreciate your time, and we will be back again tomorrow. Great. Thank you.